Hi, this is Jason with ICS. Today I want to talk to you about Microsoft Bookings. Many people currently use 365 for email. Unfortunately, a lot of users are not familiar with all the productivity tools that are available to them with Microsoft 365. Bookings is a powerful tool that allows companies to open up their calendars and scheduling to their end users. Microsoft generally advertises as a service for small companies uh, like beauty salons, massage therapists, legal, medical offices, and other companies that want somebody to book an appointment with them to come to their office and meet with them. Although not often advertised, I like to use Microsoft uh, Bookings as a productivity tool for my outside account and executives. Uh, we use this application in two unique methods. First of all, we create a calendar for all account executives. In this calendar, anyone go to this link, find availability for your company, and book an appointment with our sales representative. This application is handy for websites and email campaigns. Instead of a contact us link that allows the user to fill out a form, they click a view our calendar now link and get to book an appointment real time with the account executive. Bookings provides the web interface and interacts with the account executive's calendars in real time to see who's available. It also assigns appointments in a round robin format. All of this helps prevent email or phone tag. There's a lot more functionality in this that we'll discuss when I actually show you how to set this up. As a second application, ICS utilizes Microsoft Bookings to provide a customer with a unique link that allows people to view an individual account executive's calendar to book some time with them. This application works great to eliminate phone tag and make it easier for customers to book a phone call or appointment with your AE. The account executives can use this link in an as-needed basis, or they can put in their email signature for the ultimate, ultimate customer service experience. Now that we understand these applications in this video, I'd like to show you how to utilize the application for a group calendar for outside sales representatives. You only need one Microsoft Bookings license, which comes free with Microsoft E3 or E5 licenses. This is for the person who manages the calendar for all the account executives. The hard, hardest part of all of this is finding bookings and logging in for the first time. So if you have a Microsoft 365 account licensed for booking, you just go to uh, www.office.com, log in using your 365 credentials. Now the trick is, depending on what your default login page is, you could be taken to a different page. So if you're taken to the home page, if you're licensed, bookings will show up here. Uh, if not, try this icon up here and select bookings from here. If for any reason you still don't see bookings, click all apps and it should be there. If it's not in any of those places, then you are not currently licensed for bookings. From there, the trick is it takes you to a kind of a welcome splash screen. Uh, since I've already logged in once, it's not going to take me to my splash screen, so I kind of took you here. Uh, you'll see the splash screen. You'll have a Get It Now button. Click your Get It Now button. It'll ask you to add a calendar, add the calendar, name the calendar, which if you're doing it for your company, you would put in the company name. If you're doing it for individual, put in the individual's name, and then type in what business you're in. Once you do that, say OK. You'll get the just a moment and then eventually it will take you to a screen that looks similar to this. Here's an example of what the finished product looks like. I set up this calendar with two different types of services, a 45 minute at the customer site or a 30 minute phone call. The calendar is viewing all account executives calendars real time for availability. You're also allowed to customize the timeframes in which bookings even views a person as available. For example, you can say Bob is available on Monday from 8 to 12 for appointments, but if Bob has something on his calendar from 8 to 9.30, it'll only show him available from 9.30 to noon. To book an appointment, the customer simply selects the service and date that they want the appointment. In this instance, I'm going to pick a 45-minute meeting at the customer site. I want to look at the 18th. I have these times available, so I want to meet with them at 10 a.m., I put in the details and then I'm going to say test meeting. From there I click book and it would have successfully booked an appointment 
with me at that time and sent both the person who books the appointment and the person who receives the appointment a calendar invite. Once the appointment is booked, you also get a confirmation page where they can reschedule, cancel, cancel booking, or do new booking. If I were to go to my Outlook calendar right now, you'd also see that calendar invite in my Outlook. So let's go back to the configuration page and show how we set up this bookings page for our sales reps. So I've logged into my Microsoft bookings. The first place I generally start, you can either go through the tutorials here and the different modules, or I generally start down here at the bottom left with business information. In business information, I put the name that I want to appear at the top of my bookings page. So that name will appear right here. Uh, you can put in the business address, phone number, your email, and of course website, and then our business type here. Your default hours, and then upload your business logo. So to upload that, you simply click change, upload new logo, and you're off to the races. In a little bit, I'll show you how to actually update the color scheme to better integrate in with your logo's color screen. Color scheme. From there, I skip services, I go to staff, all right? So in staff, I go ahead and add my different staff members. For every staff member I add, I can put their hours of availability. So those are the hours that bookings will actually look at their calendar. Since this person is a manager, we just made them off every day because I actually don't want to book any appointments for them. I just want them to be part of the calendar and be able to manage it. So I signed them as staff for the calendar and said they were never available. Therefore, that manager can log in and manage all the other users. From there, I added each individual user. And here, every user had different times they wanted to be available for appointments. Uh, we're generally using this since it's looking at all their calendars and giving one general availability bookings page. We're using this for new appointments only. Uh, so they have existing appointments, proposals are putting together paperwork, phone calls. So they don't want to be available eight to five Monday through Friday. So they kind of gave me what hours that our marketing department could book appointments for them. Once you have all your staff set up, then I drop down to services. So initially it's going to have one service for initial consult. I changed that to on-site meeting at customer site. So if I click on this from here, I name whatever I want the service to be. The service name will show up on the bookings page here. So on-site meeting at customer's office, on-site meeting at customer's office. If you put in the description, that description shows up here if they hit the little I for service details. Whatever you type in there will show up here. From there, you put the estimated time of your meeting that it's going to block out on your calendar. I always change the buffer time to on because we're generally going out to a customer site or doing a phone call. So I like to give our reps a little bit of time before the meeting, a little bit of time after the meeting for drive time. So here I have buffer time on 30 minutes before the, the on-site meeting, 30 minutes after the on-site on meeting. Uh, we don't really have default prices because ours is uh, custom work. So I'll leave that blank. I don't worry about the internal notes and the custom fields. I come in and I check required customer email, phone number, customer address. I cut off this customer note by clicking on it. It's blue now. Now it's not blue. So I cut that off. I add a question. So I added the text question. And that text question is, is there anything particular you'd like to cover in our meeting? And I make that required. From there, I say OK. When you look at your bookings page, that is this section down here. Name, email, phone number, address with, please let me know if you have any special interest. And you type in that information. From there, you can set reminders. So if I click here, one day before I'm sending all attendees, just a friendly reminder that you have an appointment with ICS tomorrow, we'll come to your office and look forward to seeing you then. Keep in mind, they also have this in their calendar. This is just a reminder and on top of that, that'll go out automatically. And then I also have one set one hour before we attend. So it's just a friendly reminder that we have an appointment at your office in one hour. We will see you soon. 
So I'm going to show the service on the booking page. And in this case, I'm using the default scheduling policy. A lot of times I won't do that. And I'll uncheck this box. I'll put the time increment here. I said 48 hours in advance. So if they're going to use this, we want 48 hours notice. I don't want somebody booking an appointment for outside executives same day because a lot of times they have deadlines, they have other things going on, and they need to wrap up some other projects. So always make sure they're 48 hours out. And then their maximum lead time they could set an appointment is currently for 365 days. A little excessive, but that's what I have it set for now. And then here for email notifications, everybody gets notified when it's booked. And then I'm not allowing them to select staff because again, I'm setting new appointments, trying to round rob them, assign them randomly to our account representatives. And they don't know who our staff is at this point anyway. So there's no reason to give them the option to select who they want to book that appointment with. So we save that service. And then we have, I added a secondary service by clicking up here saying add a service. And I added a 30 minute phone call. In here, I went ahead for the default location. I put the conference call and PIN number. I put in our conference call number and PIN number. So when they book the appointment, they'll get the conference number and PIN number automatically in the invite. I made these 30 minutes long, same type of reminders, show it on the booking page. I'm not using the default scheduling policy because it's only a 30 minute call. 48 hour lead time and maximum lead time of 60 days out. Uh, everything else is the same. So you can continue to add services here. You can have one, two, three, four, five services. We, we elect to only go with two to keep it clean. And again, this is what our booking page looks like. Our logo up here, our two different services, ability to add them, required uh, information that they have to enter and they hit book and it's done. So at this point, we don't have to worry about customers. They get added as people book an appointment. Uh, so really the only other place we need to go to at this time is booking page. For the color scheme, you pick the color scheme over here on the right hand side that will match best with your logo. If you don't want your logo to display, just uncheck this box. And here are some of the default scheduling policies that we took care of earlier. One thing I forgot to mention in the services is when you go to your services, you can assign what staff is available for those services. So to do that, these are my staff members. If I want them to be available for that service and for bookings to look at their calendar, I need to click next to their name and hit save. If you don't do that, it doesn't actually look at their schedule for those services and they would not be available. So once you have finished creating your, your uh, bookings page, you need to come into booking page, say save and published, and then you can say open published page. And that gives you the finished product that I've been showing you. For the URL, simply here, you can copy it and put it elsewhere. I just go here and I save it as a favorite. Uh, so if I ever need it, I just go to that favorite, copy that URL and send it to someone. I have several different also, here on the embed, you can click on embed. You can grab this code. You can also put that on your website, allowing people the ability to book with your individuals directly from a website. So that's how I did the group company page to look at all of our account executives. Uh, I also have several other pages, including just one for myself. So if I select this, this is my own individual booking page. Instead of the logo, I have a picture of myself. If I come here to booking and I say open booking page, as my face up here has the services I have available for my customers. Somebody clicks on it and looks at my individual calendar, gives them what availability I have for that day, gives them the required information, they hit submit and has now booked it on my calendar. So that's it for Microsoft Bookings in a nutshell, kind of shows you what it can do. If you have any questions or you would like some professional help in setting it up, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on the information below. Hope you have a great day. Look forward to helping you with other apps.